Hello everybody, welcome. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today's Friday, it's April 28th, 2023. It's 8.46 a.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks. And this is 2023 newsletter number one for the Mystery Report. And uh, my apologies, I didn't get a report done sooner. And today's the day. I decided this uh, first report for the year, there were four in 2021, six in 2022. I'm doing my best with all the work involved with, with the Project Black Star to do as many of, the, of these reports. And what I need from you guys now, Tutor Program subscribers, please send me questions for newsletter number two. The, uh, this newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. Once you see the pattern, then God opens up doors. Once you help others to see his wisdom using his three witnesses, he opens up more doors. So this is from what you're seeing up here these this is a Bible chat just before COVID started then I was trying to branch out develop this program more and so there are oh no this is this is the YouTube links you're gonna to have to put these into the Wayback Machine that just dawned on me because the YouTube channel was torn down. If those are on this YouTube channel, then maybe they're going to still be there. But this is the Awakened Radio Podcast Matic Mystery Reports. This was done by this John, and he took out the Black Star Reports. This is back in 2012. Really, really good series. When you get your hands on a mystery report, you're going to want to check these out. And Royce, he's passed away. He once upon a time was interviewing me. And Crystal, you were interviewing me for a while too. So there's tidbits of information that you can gather. If you're not a subscriber, a uh, Mystery Report subscriber, then you can go to the website. Just before we get started. All the way down to the bottom of the page, and there's 2022 Mystery Report number 5. Right there. And while you're there, you can get download volume 14. 2023 Black Star Report and there's an end of days radio right there this is the scripture section you might want to check out when you subscribe you're going to get a free copy the EPUB version of my book the mystery explained this is what it looks like spirit blood and water God's wisdom in plain sight Really, really good stuff. That's going to be my, my legacy work for this lifetime. And uh, there's where you subscribe. I should have shown you. Right here, $25 per year. Get you access to all of the misreport newsletters going back to 2019. We're using the Dropbox folder link. You do not need a Dropbox folder account. You don't need a username, password, just the link. That's going to give you that access. Once you subscribe, I recommend you go back to 2019, newsletter number one. And that's the two Gospels of the New Testament. And before you even get that far, then I would recommend that you check out these introductory videos. To get the most out of the mystery explained. Okay, so Gary is, he's my buddy Gary that comes over and helps me. He relocated into here in the Ozarks. He's a member of the Slava Group program, the Land Acquisition Committee. He's uh, He sees God's wisdom better than anybody else that I know of on this planet besides myself. He's asked me more questions and received more answers. And this is the way you do it. Subscribe to the tutor program. The tutor program, that gives you more benefits. It's just $50 a year, extra $25 a year. Then you can write me your questions. And then the good stuff gets, uh, you get this type of a reply. 
using diagrams from the Mystery Explained. There's 80 color-coded diagrams in the Mystery Explained. They start off very simple, like this, and then they get more complicated as you go through. Okay, on, um, there wasn't a title for this, and this is what I named it. And this is April 28, 2023. Gary actually wrote this to me February 7th. And Gary, you received a, uh, most of this reply, but some of that was added today. So the diagrams were added today. The, the activated links to the uh, scriptures, they were added today also. And also, before I get started, it was a little confusing because I did not catch the quotes. Sometimes Gary was talking. Sometimes he was quoting me from The Mystery Explained. And I added links to my commentary in The Mystery Explained, but I didn't realize it until afterwards. That makes the presentation a bit better. And so I left it that way. Now, on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. That's kind of the theme of what's being shared here. Uh, Gary's, again, more advanced. The more mature you get, the, the deeper we go down the God's wisdom rabbit hole, if you will. And this, uh, since Gary is more advanced, then my answers are going to be more, uh, a little bit more complicated. So those that are just starting out, then we, you're ready for, for the milk and the bread, not ready for the meat yet. But when you stick with it, especially if you subscribe now and start at newsletter number one in 2019 and you work your way through all those newsletters and all those videos, by the time you get here, then you'll be ready for much of what's being shared. So Gary writes, as you know, I'm an ultimate goal, bottom line type person always wanting to know, if possible, where things are heading. I understand there are things we are not meant to know for now or ever. For whatever reason but the Lord still wants us to search I do enjoy learning about the details in the road to the ultimate goal but find that I can understand the details better and easier if I know where things are heading and my search for the bottom line in the mystery explained in the scriptures I have come to understand a few bottom line goals I believe I understand that the purpose of this creation is to restore all things back to before the rebellion judge and punish satan and all those who join with satan in the rebellion and to demonstrate all to all god's god almighty's glory and wisdom and how and what he does ultimately i understand there will be no heaven and no earth but only the infinite realm after the restoration of all things there may be more but these I understand. However, with all the incarnations going on, I am unsure about my personal bottom line. I tried to put my thoughts and questions into a logical and understanding way, but you know that terminology and language gets in the way. Semantics generally is the biggest obstacle. Because when I say gospel, I'm thinking um, Paul's gospel for us today and you might be thinking the gospel of the kingdom you might be thinking something else that's what happens to Christians a lot of times after many edits I'm hoping that the following will make sense so I just brief statement before we get to his first question you appear to have uh, Gary does have a good overall picture of what's going on the incarnations that he's talking about for example before we get into his questions and my answers. The, uh, the pattern is most easily seen in the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. See, this is in God's infinite realm. All things were made by Him. And without Him, see, heaven is the Word. Without him, there was not anything made that was made. So, infinite realm, heaven, earth. Out of these three witnesses that testify throughout the Bible, one of them is real. Two of them are created. 
in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. These realms are, uh, this is like the matrix inside of a matrix. This is the only realm that's real. The satanic rebellion happened here. And for that purpose, heaven and earth were created. So, number one, oh, well, the word, let's, uh, let me try to, I should probably pull up more diagrams. I didn't plan on this explanation when I laid out this presentation, but I think it's important. To, it'll give you some idea of the complexity of what we're really talking about here. As Gary and I have talked about these things, you know, hundreds of times in our, in our meetings, just about every time we meet, then he, Gary has more questions. And so to help you to catch up a little bit, the Word and God are one here in the infinite realm. So God, the, the, the uh, satanic rebellion happens and Adam is killed. And that created the need for God to create heaven and the earth. So God looks over to the Word and he says, Word, go over there and make Adam inside yourself again. So the word is heaven. The heaven of Genesis 1 1, the highest heaven. Uh, what's that? 1 Kings 8 26 and 27. Solomon and David know all about the differences between heaven of Genesis 1 1 and heaven of Genesis 1 8. That's between the heavens and the earth of this realm. So. This is the first incarnation of God's Word, Christ Jesus, right here. You can see it better in this diagram. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the heavenly Adam, this is Christ Jesus, between God and men. Right here. This is a JPEG. I'm going to switch this over to the TIFF so it's a little more clear. Okay, so this is the first incarnation of God's Word. Christ Jesus, the Father, is the spirit part. The Son is the soul part. The Holy Spirit is the body part. This is the man, Christ Jesus, from 1 Timothy 2, um, 1 Timothy 2, 5. The one mediator between God and men. Christ Jesus, right here. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The man, Christ Jesus. Not the human being man. Christ is not a man. He's the Son of God. He's not God, and he's not a man. He's something between God and men. First incarnation. Then, the light of Genesis 1-3. The light shined in the darkness from John 1. Which, John 1, 1-3, is the tabernacle version of Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth is the all things part. The word is the heaven part. And God is the God part. Three, three different realms. Okay, so... Christ Jesus was then asked again, the incarnation of Christ, of God's word right here, was asked to incarnate inside of heaven of this universe. We know that incarnation as the Lamb of God. He is right now in the center of the throne of heaven from Revelation 7:17, 7, center of the throne. The incarnation of Christ Jesus in this universe. Then, the Lamb of God, in heaven of Genesis 1-8, right here, incarnated onto the earth as Jesus Christ. So the Word, Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, all incarnations of the Word. Well, God's Word is, God's Word doesn't have, there's no need of being restored. He is in God's infinite realm with Him right now. And he has been, and he always will be. Christ Jesus here is an incarnation. So that's what they, uh, Gary's talking about, is there's so much incarnating going on, it's easy to get confused. It really is. Christ Jesus, God's Word, Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, then onto the earth is Jesus Christ. Then, Jesus Christ is sacrificed for our sins. He goes into the earth this physical earth right here for three days 
God raises him from the dead and then seats him above all the heavens in Christ Jesus right here. So Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. We are seated in with him, Jesus, in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you have him, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the same verse with Christ Jesus. This is Christ Jesus right here, and this is where Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that walked this earth, the Word in flesh, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right here. This is where we are seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is an almost infinite realm. This is a drop of water by comparison. This earth. The earth is the heavens, heaven, and the earth. The earth of Genesis 1, 1 is the heavens, heaven, and earth of Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Now, some of you might need to stop this, what I'm saying right now, and back up and listen to all that again. That's what Gary's talking about is a whole lot of incarnation going on. And that's, that isn't all of it. There's more. There's quite a bit more. Now I'm skipping ahead. And this whole presentation is going to make a little more sense. So, whenever God sends the priest, or the preacher, I should say, blood witness, preacher, preaching the gospel, I'm preaching the word of the cross, Jesus Christ is Lord. God raised him from the dead on the third day. Our redemption is through his shed blood. Our forgiveness is through his shed blood. Our redemption is in him. Jesus Christ, Son of God. The Almighty is his God and Father who sent him to die for us. Okay, that's pretty much 1 Corinthians chapter 15 starting the verse you know, 1 through 4. That's what I just told you. That's the gospel. I'm the preacher, and you're in the receiver position. And whenever God chooses you, then he gives you the faith of Jesus. This little spark right here. The faith of Jesus is connected to the spirit of his word, which I just shared with you. That is the spirit witness part from his living and active word. And the Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1.13 and 14. Those three witnesses are passed from the preacher, me, to the believer, you, in a faith-to-faith -faith transaction. Then, this is what happens. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are incarnate inside of your soul. There are two veils within you. The blood witness, your soul, is the place where your spirit and your body overlap. This is where the little manger sits and Jesus Christ incarnates inside of you. Another incarnation. So then, as Christ Jesus in you, the new man in you, matures by feeding on his living word. Then, the next truth, next thing to realize is that God is in Christ 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21, is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Christ Jesus, the entire almost infinite realm, is incarnate inside of me right now. Inside of him, incarnate is God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. The infinite realm is incarnate inside of Christ, inside of me, and inside of Christ, inside of you. And we're all connected. There are tethers that connect us those of us that can see by the Spirit. So Gary's growing in that part right now. And he's asking me questions about the tethering. And there's going to be a truth that has not been revealed before to anybody in this presentation. I'm getting you guys prepared for that. The little exercise that you're going to do to be able to use God's Word to see the tethering. It's, this is really, really cool stuff. Okay, so look at all, whenever Gary says there's a whole lot of incarnating going on, there's, there's a you, a God in God's infinite realm, right now, been there. Then there's you that's in heaven, the almost infinite realm, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, if you've obeyed the gospel. There's a you that's a member of the body of the Lamb in this universe. 
an incarnation. And there's you that's walking around this earth with Christ in you and God in him. So there's a you in the in the infinite realm where we're all gods. There's a you here. And we are fighting with Michael, the archangel, against the dragon. That's an almost infinite realm. It's frozen motionless from our perspective. It's like we're giant constellations. And then there's us here in the earth and on this particular earth as first fruits called to judge the world and the angels, members of Christ's body, members of the Lamb's body. Okay. Now from what I'm about to say is going to make more sense with that little foundation. Since I'm incarnated into this temporarily created um, realm, world, and destined at the rapture to join my angel half and become immortal again. What happens to my conscious, my conscience, self-awareness that I have here on earth after the rapture and after joining my angel half? Many of you are not exposed to the reality that you have a soulmate, and that soulmate is in the heavens, that your greater half. Men here are water witnesses of that greater half. So, Christ says many times that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 100% truth. Angels cannot inherit the kingdom of God either. Their domain is the heavens on the other side. It's like the holy place. I'm sorry, it's like the holy of holies. And heaven is like the holy place between the two veils. And this world is like the outer court where the labor of water is. So the angels are put back together with their man half after the woman is put back inside the man. Just go back to Genesis 2. Eve taken out of the side of the man. Well, the man was taken out of the side of the angel. That's what the types are telling us once you connect the dots to the spirit, blood, and the water. So that's what he's talking about here. And when we read scripture, I didn't mean to include that. It's in 1 Corinthians. Then women are told to pray with their heads covered, which is a symbol of these veils. This veil right here is the symbol. It's a symbol of authority. And then Paul, at the very end of his statement, say, because of the angels, because the angels are spirit witnesses. There's actually two veils between the earth and the heavens. Well, I should be looking here between the earth woman and the heavens angels. There are two veils, but that symbol of authority is it's like heaven itself with veils on either side. Once you can see by the spirit of what this is talking about. So man is a water witness. In relationship to the angels in this water witness realm but women are water witnesses in their relationship with men and that's one of the reasons when you look into the world right now this trans queer lgb whatever you want to call it nonsense is happening it's destroying the family and it's destroying christianity it's destruction just like in the infinite realm where the satanic rebellion took place. We're doing things already done. And what we're, what's hap playing out all around us is the satanic rebellion happening for the third time. That's happening with the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet in heaven. In the almost infinite realm. Time is trying to catch up to what happened in God's infinite realm and what's happening in heaven with between Michael, the archangel, and the dragon. Which that battle is frozen motionless. It has been. The, the, the dragon's head's been severed. It hasn't hit the ground yet. It was severed way back in Genesis and it still hasn't hit the ground. Okay. See if I can catch up to where we were. And answer his question. Since I am incarnate in this temporary created realm, all he's talking about is angel half. Okay, so what Gary is struggling with right now is 
what's happening in this realm with the rejoining of his angel half, I should say, this realm. His angel half and his man half, and the moment he obeyed the gospel, were reassembled. We became a member of the Lamb's body immediately when that happened. We were seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Done. We have a beginning, we have a, we have a now, and we have an end in this realm. In a flash of an instant, the moment we obeyed the gospel. So, what Gary is, is struggling with right now is what's going on in this realm and what's going on in this realm and trying to reconcile that with what's happening over here in God's infinite realm where he's a God. And you are and I am. And we all know each other. All of us. Look in a giant football stadium, the Rose Bowl, 100,000 people. You know everybody. They know you. We incarnate inside of one another. We place each other around the great table within ourselves. And that gives us our personality. Depending on how we place our brethren in our circle. Do we have the very best people at our right hand and those that are not so cool on the left side? We all arrange our brethren in different ways. And God rewards us accordingly for the wisdom to put some on our right and to put some on our left. We put bad guys on our right. We got Hillary on our right, Obama, and those guys. Well, that becomes the reflection of our outward appearance. And then God places us in the mountain of God accordingly in a pecking order. So we are in a competition. I'm going to get to that. Okay, so the reality will dawn that our true conscious consciousness is summed up in Gary in Christ Jesus, in your almost infinite self, where the Father and Holy Spirit overlap in the Son. Again, if you're brand new, you might have to go through that, stop this and read that a few times. Our life here is like a mere dream by comparison with events, including our thoughts and our intuitions, etc., happening in on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm fashion. See, when Christ says on earth, it's, it's, there, he's teaching his disciples how to pray, like John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray. He speaks of my Father who art in heaven and of what's on earth as it is in heaven. He does that for Peter and the disciples in Matthew 16, starting at verse 16. So what's bound on earth has already been bound in heaven. You have the aorist tense there. The tense of perpetuity. There's no English translation. Accurate. All of the, the scholars, all of the transcription copyists, transcribers, they all translate the aorist tense into the past tense every single time in all the translations because they don't know what to do with it. Aorist tense. Now, even all our thoughts combined from all our incarnations in the Lamb for all the ages to come are like a drop of water compared to an endless and almost infinite heavenly ocean. That's for all the ages to come. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of ages. Hundreds and hundreds of incarnations. All combined together. One drop. Compared to our existence in the almost infinite heaven. Where we are right now. We just don't realize it yet. You may be thinking that only our infinite realm life is real. Which is true. That's over here. But remember all things are summed up in the sun first. Before this objection process. Where and when God is all in all. And I do believe that that. Yeah, this pulled up. For he has put all things, all things, under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is clear that he, that this excludes, and it's it, the, 
So when you when you look at the Greek, you're going to realize Father's not there. It's inserted by the translators. It's the who put all things and subjected to him. So that's a reference to God. When all things are subjected to him, is the Son, then the Son himself is also subjected to the one who subjected all things to him so that God may be all in all. So think of this like Adam and Eve in the garden. The earth taken out of the side and then the seed begotten by the overlapping of those two. So it's like Adam and Eve and the seed. It's the same pattern and it's a type of creation itself and what's real. So when everything goes back to the way that it was in Genesis 2-7, there's only Adam. There's no Eve. Eve's inside. When everything goes back to the end, when God's all in all, there's no heaven and there's no earth. It's all back inside of God. It's all back in the infinite realm. So the, the types that were being given through creation, through Adam and Eve, and the garden, the whole thing, even the Bible itself, three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water the same way. And the one that comes first and the one that's, so the first that comes out is the water witness. The first thing that comes out of the word is the Holy Spirit. The, then the overshadowing of the power from on high, Luke 135. That's when the Son is begotten. All of the blood witnesses are begotten. Your soul is begotten. Heaven is begotten. The Son is begotten. Every blood witness in the Bible is a begotten aspect. That testifies for the original singularity, which for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, is the Word. And many, many people think that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are God. And they're, I'm sorry. Those three witnesses, Matthew 28, 19, three witnesses of the Word. The three witnesses of the Almighty are listed with the Almighty in Revelation 1, 8. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. There they are, right there. And many, many people gasp at that notion, at that idea. Because in their mind, they have already created an idol of worship out of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They've taken the Son of God, the Word of God, the Word made flesh, and transferred, translated Him into the Almighty, which totally blocks out. That's what idolatry does. The devil has given people a heavenly way to worship the Son of God as an idol. And probably more than half of professing Christianity has done that. And me saying that God who is, God who was, God who is to come are the three witnesses of the Almighty makes me their heretic. So this is the, the this diagram was just this is this diagram right here, broken up and opened up into its three witnesses, which is the tabernacle version. Every tabernacle in the Bible is has a spirit, blood, and water section, like you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. The man, the woman, and the seed. There are charts in the Mystery Explained that help you to see the pattern, the patterns of what's going on. So therefore, there is a summing up process of all things in this teeny little earth with those things in the infinite realm. Into Gary, in Christ Jesus, where the blood witness expands and enlarges throughout the ages to come. Think things through to realize that infinite cannot possibly enlarge nor contract. Infinite cannot shrink and it cannot grow. It's infinite. Everything on the other side of the second veil is frozen for all the ages until Adam, the earth, and Christ Jesus, the last Adam, heaven, step back through that veil as one. So the first Adam and the last Adam become one. And Adam is raised from the dead by the power of the Almighty. And you can hear it. Some people are saying, that's blasphemy. The thing to realize is that heaven is an incarnation. And it is, for lack of a better 
phrase, Adam soul. Infinite realm, Adam soul. Adam's infinite realm body is the heavens, heaven, and earth, the earth of Genesis 1 1. His soul is heaven of Genesis 1 1. That's why Paul makes the reference to Christ as the last Adam. First and the last. That they become one and pass right through that second veil, and Adam stands up brand new, complete, mature resurrected in God's infinite realm, which from our perspective in God's infinite realm happens in the flash of a single instant. It's only because of the illusion of time and space that that realm from our perspective is frozen motionless for the, all the ages. That is the fulfillment of the types on display when everything, including us, our water witness selves, change in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye. Let me stop here and come over here. So this is the subjection part. For, oh, I already read that to you. This is we're still in first the gospel that I shared with you, first Corinthians. 1 through 4. So there's a thread that's being drawn here for you from the Pauline Epistles, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the Gospel. And then what you just saw there, starting at verse 27, now what you see here, in verse, starting at verse 51. Behold, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trump will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. So this happens in the snap of your fingers, and the, the twinkling, and the blink of an eye. It happens that fast when we pass through this veil. For this, is, for this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. So there are types that are being taught here. They're perishable, and the mortal of the heavens and the earth are going to put on immortality when they pass through the second veil back into the infinite realm. That's the ultimate lesson that some can see whenever they're able to identify the types and the teaching from the three witnesses of spirit, the infinite realm, the blood, heaven, and the earth, water. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That's what's going to be said in the infinite realm where Adam was killed during the Satanic Rebellion. Death swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Because Adam's going to be standing there, all the members of his body restored. All of the serpent's sons, your seed, Genesis 3, 15, they're going to be burning in the lake of fire. Part of the judgment, the second death. This is... Um, where I got a little confused, got up really early this morning to try to get this out for you guys. And some of this is and this this reply I wrote to Gary back in February. And but here we go. He writes in the books uh, in the book, which is the mystery explained, the mystery of the three witnesses on page forty four. You write where Christ is seated at the right hand of God in the Word realm. The word realm is heaven of Genesis 1 1. In the book section, Spirit summed up in the blood witnesses, 32, you write, Only the Son is subjected back to God in the infinite world. So I conclude, this is Gary, that I must return to the infinite realm of God Almighty inside of Christ Jesus. I'm also concluding that there are at least two infinite selves. The original infinite self in the infinite realm, residing with God Almighty, and a second infinite self created after the rapture and joining of the angel half, and the final summing up of all things. This is where Gary's starting to get off. He's, he's standing and seeing with his spiritual eyes in heaven, and there's an obstruction in his way. By the words you guys use, it helps me to identify the obstruction to help you to see around it. 
to stand in a little different perspective to cause the shadows to disappear and then voila the light and then you can see what Gary is confusing here is the water witness man witness standing on the earth and the reconnection to the angel half in the heavens which happens at the moment we obey the gospel he is visualizing that as an infinite realm self and is not the reality is that as a member of the lamb's body that we are still water witnesses in heaven for the ages to come we're going to judge the world and the angels Peter John and James are going to be on the sea of glass out in front of us and there's going to be all the citizens of heaven myriads and myriads of different kinds of hosts approaching the lamb and that's where we do our thing but even as the judges and rulers over the kingdom the entire realm heaven realm we're still water witnesses in this realm as long as we're in the earth because the earth is a water witness to heaven that's the almost infinite realm so here's the deal simultaneously we're in Christ Jesus the almost infinite realm and things are happening there in the same fashion as the title of this this uh, article here on earth as it is in heaven the almost infinite realm as it is in God's infinite realm so the things are all connected what's happening in the infinite realm what's happening in heaven the almost infinite realm and what's happening here in the earth the finite realm a little teeny teeny drop of water realm but there's a thread that connects all of them together the obstruction the obstructions include the veils separating the heaven the infinite realm heaven and earth and time there's no such thing as time in the infinite realm and there's a gigantic massive time differential between heaven and earth heaven of Genesis 1 1 and earth of Genesis 1 1 and so we're doing things already done Ecclesiastes 1 9 through 11 or we're doing things already done in God's infinite realm and so oh only the son is subjected back so I conclude I must return okay there's an infinite realm self of you incarnate in each of your brethren there's an infinite self version of you I'm speaking to Gary but I'm also speaking to you incarnate in each of your brethren in God's infinite realm again we all know each other intimately from the inside out like married couples we all know each other from the inside out we just don't know it yet that's why Christ's golden rule applies to everybody you treat others as you want to be treated yourself because there's a there's a host of those people inside of you inside of a universe you are your own universe and all these members all your brother incarnate inside of you and that's your universe things are done your way but you're also incarnate inside of them with all your brethren and that's their universe and if you treat them badly in you they're you're gonna be treated badly in them so every decision that you make in your all of your incarnations to the end of time will have an effect on you incarnate inside of them I want to stop this and think about the dwell on that for a second. Okay, the Gary here, incarnate in heaven and earth, is the incarnation inside your brother Adam. In God's infinite realm, where Adam was destroyed, the you incarnated inside of Adam. You made the decision, the conscious decision. I'm, I'm going to incarnate inside of Adam. See what's happening in there. Well, when Adam was killed, you were killed too. When heaven was remade, you were remade too. And when the earth was made formless and void, well, back in Genesis 1 1, there was a perfect earth. You were made, your incarnation was there. There was no angels, there were no men, there was no heaven, heaven, and earth. Everything was a singularity, one realm. All of us were there. Nobody was born, nobody died. But then, darkness was upon the face of the deep, Genesis 1-2. That wasn't, that, that's where people, um, they think that creation was the Big Bang. Creation wasn't the Big Bang. 
the Big Bang Theory of Creation is a myth. That title you can search, I wrote on that decades ago. It's a myth. The Big Bang is the destruction of a previously existing universe. What happens in Genesis 1 is the reconstitution of those broken remains. So that's what's going on right now is the members of Adam's body, including you, are being restored one cell at a time. The restoration of all things is the restoration of all of the members of Adam's body, collectively being put back together, Humpty Dumpty style. So Gary is here, the Gary here now is summed up in your angel half in the heavens to be summed up in Christ Jesus with the spirit witness infinite realm self. I know that is confusing, but all water witnesses are summed up with their spirit witness counterparts like the Father oversharing the Holy Spirit. And that is pulled up. Whoops. My apologies. My old browser. It's a habit. Luke 135. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit, the water witness, will come upon you. And the power from on high, the Father, the spirit witness, will overshadow you, and for that reason the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. It's exactly what you're seeing right here. Power from on high, the Holy Spirit, the overshadowing, and then the begotten aspect, the Son of God, the only begotten Son. So you're going to find that every diagram in the mystery explained agrees 100% with what's in God's Word. This took decades and decades to see. And then, and that was from the time I was a kid until 2005. The summer of 2005 is whenever the Mystery Explained was written. And then it took until two, that November 2017 before the Mystery Explained was finally published. And that, putting that together was like having a baby in itself. Okay. Where, where am I? Therefore, there is a summing up process of all things in this teeny little earth with those things. In the infinite realm, into Gary, in Christ Jesus, where the blood witness expands and enlarges throughout all the ages to come. Think things through to realize that the infinite cannot possibly enlarge. I've already gone through this part. Here's the twinkling of an eye. Here we are. Luke 135. None of this makes sense outside the awesome power and will of Almighty God, putting his sons back together again, Humpty Dumpty style. Gary writes, assuming my terminology and conclusions are correct then, what is my new, inf my new infinite self hidden in Christ Jesus? Ultimate destiny in the infinite realm after the final crossing through the last veil and the summing up of all things. You see, Gary spends a lot of time thinking these things through. He's getting bits of information here and there, the mystery explaining from being personally with me. And he's connecting the dots. And he has more questions. So, the answer. Your infinite realm God self is in competition with your infinite realm brethren for higher positions in the mountain of God in the same way that we are in competition in Christ Jesus. That's why Paul says to run the race as to win. Only one receives the wreath. And don't fight as a beating air. And on the other side of the approaching veil, all of this is going to make perfect sense and more people are going to realize I'm in a competition. And I'm down on the totem pole because I didn't even know it. Mystery Explained will help you to realize where you are. And help you to take advantage and to get higher in the it's a pyramid in heaven. Christ is the capstone. And that is typical of the mountain of God in God's infinite realm. You have a position in that pyramid in heaven. You have a position. Higher positions, that's way better. It's bright at the top and it's dark at the bottom. The garments that the sons wear from the rough cut bottom stones of the pyramid, dingy. It's like smoky. In different shades of gray. The sun's at the top. Garments. Whenever 
a, a, a citizen of heaven appear, they stand in front of a son of God that's near the top, their faces shine. And that whenever they turn and walk away, they cause the faces of others to shine because it's so bright. Where you want to be in that mountain of God? Do you want to be way up there near the top? Or do you want to be dingy and down at the bottom? So the mystery explained can help you to take advantage in this life to ascend up not only the pyramid, but the mountain of God and God's infinite realm when you connect these dots. And you will be able to get far ahead in the 3600 year period that we're about to go through. So we're going to be seated in the heavenly places, vacated by the devil's children being chained. We're going to occupy those heavenly positions. We're going to have works for the next 3,600 years, helping Elijah to restore all things. Knowing that, passing through this veil, having the knowledge of that is going to help you to have a better position so that you're able to do more things. And you have the greatest opportunity right now to leapfrog over others in this competition by waking the heck up and realizing this is what that you're Neo you're living in a matrix I'm Morpheus I got the red pill take it or take that blue pill go back to bed and believe whatever you want to believe but you're gonna pay for it later in the timeline it's far better that you never hear the truth and never have the opportunity to accept it than to hear the truth and reject it it's gonna pay dividends for you put you way ahead later in the timeline or it's gonna cause setbacks just saying being honest with everybody. The mountain of God. We are stones of fire. Mountain of God. In God's infinite realm. Me personally, I want to be at the top near God. In the in the pyramid, there I didn't I don't have one pulled up, but the where Paul and Barnabas and Titus and those guys are up near Christ, that's where I want to be. At the top. When we go into our um whatever you want to call them our mansions in that pyramid in heaven the ones at the top when you go inside appear like realms you look on the inside and you look at the outside you look on the inside and there's more room inside than there is on the outside the 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 mansions if you want to call them that at the base of that pyramid are like apartments and it's dingier darker than the higher you get the brighter everything is and the, the, the better perspective you have to see everything that's in heaven. The higher you go, just think about it. The higher you go in the mountain, the further you can see. The lower you are, the more things are in the way. Obstructions. So this is the diagram that's in the mystery explained, showing these three realms. See the second veil? And the first veil? And this earth, the heaven, seven, and earth? See, we're water witnesses down here. As long as we, our consciousness is here in this earth of Genesis 1 1 heavens heaven and earth we're always going to be water witnesses we have a self that's up here in Christ Jesus almost infinite self blood witness so what's going on in the infinite realm and this water witness realm is being summed up in yourself that's in the Son in Christ Jesus sitting in the heavenly places I know it's kind of complicated especially if you haven't seen this before the 666 man People think they know what this means. He who has wisdom, and we're talking about God's hidden wisdom. He who has wisdom, he will understand the 666 is the number of a man. That man, like the heavenly man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2, five, is three men, just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The body of the devil, the body of the Antichrist, and the body of the false prophet, 666. This is passing away, the heart of stone. The new man of God includes the body of Elijah, the body of Christ, the body of Moses. And when you look at the throne, you'll see these are angels, these are men, like Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass, and the members of Christ's body. There are pictures of it in crystal color and the mystery explained to help you to see what's going on. The decisions you are making here in the earth, water witness realm, domain of darkness, result from the decisions made in God's infinite realm, beyond the veil of time and space. In on earth as it is in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm fashion you can see why by the time I finished writing this this morning that the title this had to be the title what's going on so we are doing things already done 
Ecclesiastes. Let's head back over here. Oh, this is, uh, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so each may receive compensation for his deeds done through the body in accordance with what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, that's what you see me doing. I want to win this race, man. I want to prepare pe people spiritually by showing you God's hidden wisdom right here, like I'm doing right here today. And the mystery explained. I hope you get a copy and you'll buy a case of books and you'll send them to everybody that you know. That will earn you a reward on the other side of that veil that's coming. I mean, of course, that's what I hope you'll do. I want to see you have the rewards, but ultimately my goal is to win this race. That, for me, is to help people prepare physically for this black star that's coming. So there's plenty of evidence. Hey, my son Terrell, he saw this coming. He got away from the coast. He's in the middle part of the landmass, creating a survival group program, trying to help people get connected so they can be counted among the living for when I bring them home. And then this, so spiritually and physically, the best of my God-given ability, not just spiritually. I could have sat in Florida, wrote the mystery explained, and just done that. Or it could have done just physically. My goal is to win the race by doing both. So there's two newsletter programs. One for the spirit, one for the body. Oh, this one is, um, I said you are gods. And all of you are sons of the Most High. This is back from Psalms 82, 6. And then Jesus is quoting that and he says, Has it not been written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, scripture cannot be broken. Are you saying of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world that you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? See, Jesus, people want to make Jesus Christ into, the, into God Almighty. I, no. It, he claims to be the Son of God right here. He's either the Son of God or he's a liar. There's no middle, there's no middle room. And I showed you Christ Jesus, he's the word sent by God to incarnate as Christ Jesus, as the entire realm, and then to be the Lamb of God, the incarnation of Christ Jesus, to take away the sin of the world, and then to incarnate on the earth as Jesus Christ, to sacrifice, to make the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, and then raised to be at his right hand in the almost infinite realm. That's where he is now. That's where we are right now. We just don't know it yet. And this is where we are now. What has been is what will be. And what has been done in God's infinite realm is what will be done in this earth realm. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one may say, see this, this is new. It has already existed for ages. And that's the thing to realize. This is very important passage. Very, very important. Because the evil age began in Genesis 1-2, when the darkness fell. That's the key feature, characteristic of this evil age, Galatians 1-4, that we're in right now, darkness. Ephesians 6-12, the evil forces of this darkness, that's where I struggle. It's not against flesh and blood, it's against the powers, principalities, dominions of this darkness that fell in Genesis 1-2. But right here you're seeing that there were ages before this evil age, plural, ages, because those are the ages, the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1. Because before all of this even started, with the darkness falling, we played out what happened before the Satanic Rebellion in multiple ages, perfect ages, where nobody was born and nobody died. The age began, poof, God created everything and everybody, perfect, complete, nobody died, just like in the infinite realm. We did all the things that we had to do, and then... Poof, God made the next age. Poof, God made the next age. Perfect. No angels, no men, no women. It was only after the darkness fell and the reconstitution that there were angels, men, and women. It's not normal. There's no male and female in heaven, right? There's none in God's infinite realm. Because men and women and angels are not normal. They're abnormal. They're only part of this temporary realm. And we're here for what? For judgment. That's what we're here for. It says, it has already existed, which there is no remembrance of the earlier things and of the latter things as well, which will occur. There will be no remembrance of them among those who will come later still. 
As you guys are my witnesses, I want to testify to something that I've told Gary and a few people. There will be more incarn <clears throat> pardon me. There will be more incarnations of men, women, and angels in this universe in the final three ages than of all the previous ages combined. That's the way it's going to work. And the time is coming when people will look into the sky and all they'll see is light. They will not be able to see the stars. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But you can't see the stars if there's light everywhere, day and night. Think about it. The reason you can see the stars is because of the darkness. So next, oh, the decisions you make here oh, on earth as is fashion. We are doing things already done. That's what I just read to you. In an effect realm. This is the effect realm. The cause realm is two realms removed. This is the effect realm. This is the cause realm right here. Heaven is in between. We're doing things already done here. We're doing them here and here. Okay. Next question. Do I remain as an incarnate in the body of Christ in the infinite realm after summing up of all things? What connection will I have? Well, let, let me see if I can. These are connected together, but let's see. Do I remain as a, an incarnate in the body of, of Adam, body of Christ? In the infinite realm. See, in the heaven realm, you're a body of, member of the body of Christ. In the earth realm, you're a member of the body of Adam. But see, this appears to be confusing. In the infinite realm. There's no such thing as Christ in the infinite realm. In the infinite realm, that's God's word. There's no incarnations there. The concept of Christ and a Savior and those things, as far as being connected to Jesus Christ, that's heaven and earth. In the infinite realm, God and his word are the same thing. So it's a little bit difficult for me to answer your question. So after the summing up of all things, so the summing up of all things that Paul is talking about, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at 27, is in this universe. The summing up of all things, this universe, in the sun, the sun is heaven. And then that, those two realms, this realm and this realm, are summed up inside of God, who becomes all in all. In the infinite realm. Okay. So what connection will I have to the original infinite self prior to Satan's rebellion in the infinite realm after the summing up of all things? So there's a summing up of all things that's happening here in the earth. There's a summing up of all things that's happening in heaven. And there's a summing up of all those things into the sun, which is allows Adam to stand up restored in God's infinite realm. So what I'm sensing here is that, um, Gary, you're feeling, we've talked about this, that you're feeling a, a little bit let down that you are an incarnation. And your infinite realm self is still in the infinite realm. But there's light at the end of that tunnel. There's a a golden lighting at the end of what of what you're looking for. And the answer is, um, yes, even though there's two questions there. Well, um, what connection will I have? So, do I remain incarnate? Yes. What connection will I have to the original self? Okay, that is part of your choosing to incarnate in Adam in the first place, while Adam has chosen to also incarnate inside of you. The magnificent part is that Gary in Adam is about to be glorified by the hand of the Almighty as a reward for all the good deeds done for all the ages to come. Now, this is a combination of what's about to happen as we're going to the next age. And on the other side of that is what's going to happen when we trans when we are translated back to the infinite realm at the end of all the ages. So I'm saying two things actually at the same time. So you and all of your brethren, a myriad of incarnations, are being glorified, which has a dramatic impact on Gary as a God in God's infinite realm, via all your incarnations. That's the reason that we incarnate inside of one another. It's to increase our position in the mountain of God. 
to make a, a myriad of decisions for the good and to learn our lessons and be and place everybody inside of us in the correct in the correct position that correct combination of number one number two number three in our universe is what gets us points with God and putting the wrong person right directly at your right hand big giant demerit and it reflects in your outward appearance and it pushes you down in the mountain of God so via all your incarnations and your brothers being incarnate inside of you that's the thing to realize like Romans 4 uh, 12 start at verse 4 that we are members of Christ's body and we are members of one another that's the part that slips by people we are all members of one another you in Adam is rewarded and elevated to the nearest position at Adam's right hand and vice versa you in God's infinite realm is then elevated to a higher um, up higher in the mountain of God as you in your brethren are also elevated everything is a competition in heaven which is the blood witness realm and in the infinite realm as the sons of God jockey for better positions using a myriad of avenues you God and um, Gary and Adam have teamed up with Gary and all your brethren to increase the position of infinite Gary to the highest position possible in the mountain of God so those of you that can see through these veils back to the infinite realm which you do by looking inwardly by the way the incarnations that I showed you there are veils and you're given authority through your faith knowledge and wisdom the processes to pass through those veils same thing in heaven you can have a chest plate an ephod from Jewish tradition and it's going to, you're going to have stones and they're going to be precious more precious to you than anything in heaven because the the configuration and the quality of the cuts my apologies that was an important phone call I didn't even realize my phone was still on it's off now I'll catch up with uh, with that after this so the um, I lost my train of thought here a little bit my apologies for that again but that we're all in a competition and although Gary I can sense that you feel a little let down because you're a God but you're an incarnation you go on go phooey I'm an incarnation it's really great because you are a myriad of incarnations and you're all working together and you're able to increase your position in Christ in this universe in the Lamb and in the almost infinite universe in Christ Jesus and in the infinite realm by all the things that you're doing here and you have at least now you have an awareness of that that's part of your consciousness the blood witness part so that came from the spirit and has gone through the veil in you into the your consciousness which is going to affect your decision-making process for the ages to come beginning now it's really really a great thing so next in the book section of the mystery of Christ the bottom of page 128 you write part of your sanctification your separation from the world is keeping your mind fixed on the things above so this is the part that I was added that I added and while surrounding yourself with the things of God our change of mind repentance I added this to Montaneo to invert the spiritual things to the position of highest importance symbolizes God who is in you placing you who was in the water servant position while simultaneously placing you to come into the spirit position of victory glory and power within God's realm where true authority originates the seemingly this seemingly magical transformation allows the umbilical thread connection between your infinite self beyond the veil to the enlarging Christ in you self within the garden environment of your being so when I originally been, began reading this this morning then this was not indented and I was adding this content thinking that I was adding to what I had previously written to Gary in February and then realized it was what he wrote to me in February so this is a, this is coming out a little bit different but after writing this 
Gary asks, is the infinite self above in, in three paragraph referring to the original infinite self prior to Satan's rebellion and God's God Almighty's creation of the world? Question. So that probably should stop right here. Is the, is the paragraph a reference to the infinite realm self? Well, let me go ahead and read both of them. Does it, does it refer to my new infinite self following the rapture? See, the infinite self, the rapture is something that happens in this earth, in the earth of Genesis 1-1, that affects the heaven of Genesis 1-1. You're in Christ Jesus there. At that moment, in the twinkling of an eye, our mortal puts on immortality. What that means is, is that our incarnation in the Lamb of God here in heaven, of Genesis 1 8 is parallel to what's going on in Christ Jesus in the almost infinite realm. So in God, in Christ Jesus in the infinite realm, it, the work is already done. Boom, done. At the moment you obeyed the gospel, complete, done. What's happening here is not done. That is going to catch up when the, at the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Poof. In an instant, our earth as it is in heaven, equation is going to be complete. Now, see that, what I'm just describing to you here, is all heaven and earth stuff. But you have the infinite realm. See the infinite self that you have here? The infinite self? That's the infinite realm thing. So does it refer to my... In, so everything that I'm saying has to do, and everything Paul is saying, has to do with what's happening in the earth, with the mortal. Think about it. He can't be talking about the infinite realm because mortal's putting on immortality. There's no such thing as mortal in the infinite realm. That's happening here. Okay, so does it refer to my infinite self following the rapture? That's where the confusion is coming in. You're thinking that's an infinite self. Let's uh, change that characterization to glorified self. So whenever the mortal puts on immortality, that's a glorified body. And it's a great thing. If I can stop here just for a second. Then, at the moment of the rapture, when we look at each other, those that, that are dead in Christ, they're going to be raised first, and then we're going to join them, those of us that remain. We're all going to look the same. We have the same bright white garments. And if, you, if we're standing before the throne, and somebody's behind us looking, we look like, kind of like the members of the bride in our white garments. And we all look the same. Same size, same shape, same garment. We look like, well, chickens. <laughs> the white chickens. That's what we look like. With robes. The difference is that we're all holding something in our arms. Out in front of us. Some of us have bigger piles than others. Because we have to go to the judgment seat, and at the judgment seat on the other side of that is where Christ is. And we put our works right on that brazen altar. We pile it right on there. And some of us are going to be leaning forward, getting ready for it, because when we put them on there, Christ is going to do his thing, and then it's going to be poof. And it's going to be changed into precious stones and a scepter, if you have great power, a crown, if you are a ruler, a little bitty ring, if you have, you know, you didn't do very well in your works and stuff. And the most important part is the smoke. So if you have uh, flesh, fleshy, fleshy this, fleshy, fleshy that, you're never able to overcome the flesh, st struggling with drugs, struggling with what, you name it then that those works are going to be there. You're going to be carrying them. And they're going to turn into wood, hay, and straw. And they're going to burn with black soot, some of the stuff. If you are helping people, you're helping people see God's wisdom, you're, you're leaning forward. You're, you're always, whenever you're standing in front of the judgment seat of Christ, and you put your words on there, you want to lean forward. If you're put, pressing backwards, and it, everything turns black, it's going to magnify. Because you're afraid of what's coming, because you know what's coming. Right? So the idea is to have good works. Spend your life doing good works, helping other people, being good. Because remember, Second Corinthians 5 is that we're rewarded 
for the deeds in the flesh, good and bad. So some of it's precious stones. That's First Corinthians, what is that, 3, start at 10. Some of it's wood, hay, and straw. Some of it's precious stones and gold and precious and all good stuff. So when you're leaning forward, it amplifies, magnifies. Good, if that's what you have coming. And shrieking backwards when it's bad, not a good thing. It makes things worse. And the way that we, so whenever we go to the judgment seat of Christ, poof, we're changed by our works and the judgment. We turn around and face all of our brethren. All of our brethren see us at the same moment. And, well, I shouldn't say at the same moment because those that are on our left as we're turning, towards the left or the right, they see us frontwise first. And they get an imprint. See, we are all inside of one another. It's, I describe it in the book. It's like a giant uh, typewriter ball. Those of you that know what a manual typewriter was, and they have the ball. And each of those letters that would spin around, the electric typewriters, each of those is a face. So there's a ball inside of me, and your face is one of them. Well, that face changes at the moment of that judgment. Each of our brethren change. What happens inside of us changes at the judgment. And we all look the same going up there, except for the varying, you know, loads of stuff we're carrying. But when we turn around and face our brethren again, we all we all have an individual character. Some of us are big. Some of us have big scepters and crowns and garments that shine like the sun. And the the chest plate, the light, the way the light reflects on the, because there's light everywhere, and the light reflects on the, the stones that are, and s some of us have precious stones that are like finely polished and razor edges where the light glistens along the edges. And it reflects in all the eyeballs of all of our brethren. So it, whenever we turn, there's a signature, there's a resonance for each brother, and that is copied by all of us. We all know our brethren to the end of the age by that resonance. We can look inwardly and communicate with one another. And we pull each other up, like you do on your cell phone, but it's inwardly. Then we see our brother in their glory, or we see our brother in their, well, not so glorious state. So that, and what's going on on earth is happening because of what's happening in heaven, because of what's happening in God's infinite realm. So always remember that what's happening in the Lamb, even we're judging the world and the angels, we're water witnesses, it's happening because of what's happening in heaven. It's because of what's happening in God's infinite realm, or happened in God's infinite realm. That's the cause, this is the effect. People think, yet yeah, you have choices. You don't have choices here. This is the effect realm. God called you to the gospel because of what's happening in God's infinite realm. People do not wake up one morning and say, I'm going to be a Christian. It doesn't work that way. God sends the preacher. God chooses us. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, start at 13. God chooses us through the gospel. He gives us the faith of Jesus so that we can obey the gospel. That's Romans 3.26. And the translation says faith in Jesus. Many times it's not faith in Jesus. It's faith of Jesus. It's a noun. It's a it's a, it's a possession that's given to us by the Almighty via the Holy Spirit, as I showed you before. That's the way it works. Oh, that's the way it's, yeah, right here, at the diagram right here. Some of us have this going on inside of us. Some of us have the devil, the beast, and the false prophet incarnate inside of us. I'm not, not us, them, some people. The Hillary's and the you know the bad bad guys. Many people that think they're Christians, they have the Antichrist inside of them. And they say, "Well, the Antichrist is coming soon. He's going to be." No, the Antichrist has been already here. The mystery of iniquity has been going since Paul's day. We are the temple. Some of us have Christ in us. Some of us have the Antichrist in us. Many that have the Antichrist in us in them, they're delusional. The deluding influence. Second Thessalonians two, start at ten. Third. They're deluded into believing that they're sons of light when they're sons of darkness. Very, very, very common. The world is filled with professing Christians that think they're saved and they're burning in the lake of fire already. And it's filled with carnal Christians. The babes. 1 Corinthians 3, start at 1. Babes. They're, they're, all they can take is milk. If you lay, I've mentioned this to Gary several times. 
I don't have a picture of that pyramid up. If you lay that pyramid sideways so that Christ and Paul and Barnabas and Titus, the, the apex of the pyramid is 2,000 years ago, we are at the base of the pyramid now. The sons of God walking around, the saved son of God, sons of God. They are the rough cut common stones. Most of what I'm saying here is for the mature. Peter, I mean not Peter, he's the last one to ever see it. But Paul, Barnabas, and Titus, they would take you this stuff very quickly. Those in the, the Christians in the world today, I'm telling you, Gary sees it as well as anybody, and still he squints his eyes and looks and has difficulty seeing. Those of us here today are the rough cut stones. And you're going to see God's wisdom because God chooses you to see it. And then the, your willingness to help other people see it is what's going to open the doors for you. That's the way it works for me. That's the way it's worked for me since I was young. Okay. So Christ, Christ in you and God within him shall continue to enlarge to the end of time as all blood witnesses inside all the macro sets eventually become full. That is the moment that you in God's infinite realm will die. And oh, you who was water. I added this now. Again, this is, I thought that uh, I was, I was confused because Gary's quoting from my book. Um, you who was water, making room for the redeemed you to come, forming you who is. That marks the moment that the spirit and water witnesses become one and all in all. Question. Now are you saying the original infinite realm self dies after I, the new infinite self in Christ Jesus, steps through the final veil into the infinite realm? Did the original die in the rebellion? I'm not sure what is meant here. So there's no such thing as an infinite self in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is finite. Heaven of Genesis 1 1 is finite. That's where there's a little bit of the semantics problem. Because the, the infinite stuff is in God's infinite realm. After you step back through the second veil. In Christ Jesus is in heaven. It's on the created side. It's almost infinite. It's going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger with each age like the earth will. Every age it gets bigger. But the infinite realm cannot get bigger. So this, let's keep the infinite realm on the other side of the second veil. And anything in Christ Jesus, that's finite. Even though it's almost infinite. Almost infinite compared to infinite is always going to be like a drop of water. So, the best way to try to answer this, what's above here, is revisit the truth of 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. That's where it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that we're all going to be changed. To realize that the big change, we shall all be changed, takes place in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. The restoration of Adam and the restoration of all the sons of God in God's infinite realm takes place in the flash of a single instant from our perspective in the infinite realm. Adam was murdered with his insides, all incarnate brethren, scattered everywhere. And Adam is restored within all his brethren in him and around him in the twinkling of an eye. God allows his sons to actively participate in the restoration of all things through the creation of heaven and earth and the created illusion of time and space. Time and space are not real. They're an illusion. From our infinite realm perspective, heaven and earth and all the ages to come, all, all of that, ages and ages and ages, takes place within the flash of a single instant and is no bigger than a drop of water. And I'm saying the drop of water, it's really the size of an atom. The only reason that the infinite gods in God's infinite realm can be active participants within that split instant is because we are infinite. And we're able to look within something that is infinitesimally small. And because God gave us something. And that's the thread, the umbilical. That most people, that, we're, it's good that uh, he's going to ask about right here. So, to which infinite self does the umbilical thread connect? From where to where does the thread flow? God teaches his sons. This is the best part of everything that I'm saying here. For the mature, I'm probably going to 
inherit some heretics. I mean, if I haven't already, because some people are just not going to be able to accept the things that uh, that are real, the truth, like the Matrix. Remember when Neo first found out the truth of the Matrix? What's the first thing he did? He threw up. That's what happens when people wake up. If you're not throwing up, then you're not awake. God teaches his sons about the infinite heaven, earth, umbilical th uh, threads and the types of God's spirit. Beginning in Genesis 1-2. Moving over the surface of the waters. Through Melchizedek. Is the in He's like the Son of God. He's the incarnation of the Holy Spirit walking around. Melchizedek made intercession with Gentiles for eons and eons and eons before any such thing as a Jew walked this planet. And it's in the types that we see the thread. And in the temple, John the Baptist's father, uh, his father, remember he was chosen by Lot, Luke 1, five, And he went behind the veil and he got the Holy Spirit and he, he was struck dumb because he didn't believe. Well, John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit the same spirit that's the thread running through Scripture. He received it in his mother's womb. And then he passed it to Christ at the Jordan, um, in the Jordan River. Only John the Baptist could baptize Christ because he was the only one that had the spirit from the tabernacle. And Christ, and by the way, John the Baptist is another skin. Christ says he's Elijah. Because Elijah is another skin, just like Abraham, just like Joshua, for our father Adam. I know, sounds like blasphemy, doesn't it? But look at the last two verses of the Old Testament. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. Elijah stepped through that veil. That's the first veil of scriptures. Oh, I'm sorry, the second veil. When you lay it out like a tabernacle. On the other side of that, Mark 1, 4. And the, who appeared in the wilderness? John the Baptist. Christ says he's Elijah. And that he's coming again to restore all things. Because he is. Because all of these skins from Genesis 120 to 121. Elijah, John the Baptist, David, prophet, priest, and king of the earth. Adam. Follow the thread. Oh, until the end. See, so where did I stop here? Christ's baptism. And Christ had to send a helper to the disciples. He said, well, it's best that I go away. Because if I don't go away, I can't send you the helper. The helper of the spirit. The same spirit he got from John the Baptist. The same one John the Baptist got from his father. The same one that came from the temple. Melchizedek incarnate. See, there's a thread there. And it's passing through veils. And then, and all, and then, oh, the spirit separating Paul and Barnabas for the work that he had, had for them to do. And all the way to the spirit saying, come. In Revelation 22, 17. There's a thread, continuous, unbroken thread throughout the Bible. And it, whenever you do the research and you look and God opens your eyes, you're going to see that there's an umbilical thread that connects you to the almost infinite realm. Well, the heaven of Genesis 1, 8, and then to heaven of Genesis 1, 1, and then to the infinite realm where you're a God. There's a thread there that goes through the universe, through the veils, and there's a thread there inside of you. That's connecting you to Christ in you, to God in him. And when you look inside and you're mature, you can see that typewriter ball with all the faces of your brethren on it. It's like a roll of decks. And you can contact any of your brethren on demand in heaven. We're all connected. And then when you become more mature in Christ, then you're going to look into Christ's eyes and you're going to see uh, God in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And on that typewriter ball, that's inside of there, the faces of your brethren in God's infinite realm, where you have access to them right now, if you're mature, if you're counted among the mature. And again, the only reason that we can communicate with ourselves in God's infinite realm is because on the other side of that veil, we are infinite. And you, yourself on the other side is look is as if he's peering into a drop of water. And it's, and it's, it's so small. That it's really like looking into a molecule, that hydrogen, atom. Just follow the, oh, this should be thread. I'm doing thread assessment for Black Star, isn't it? Follow the thread. i got to remember to, to uh, 
fix that through the two veils of God's word for identifying the umbilical tethers extending from God's infinite realm through heaven and into the earth really really advanced stuff I haven't shared that with Gary before then number four in John 10 34 Jesus answers the Jewish leaders in the temple on Solomon's porch quoting is it not written in your law that you are God's uh, which infinite self was Jesus referring to when answering the Jewish leaders? The original, new, summed up, or the summed up self. So there's no summed up anything in the earth or in heaven that is infinite. The infinite part comes only in God's infinite room. And that is by the operation of Almighty God. Because God can do it. Nobody else inside the creation can. So Christ is saying that you are incarnations of God's, in God's, and God's sons, sons of God, in God's infinite realm. We are members of Adam's body in the earth and members of Christ's body, the last Adam, or Antichrist's body in the almost infinite heaven. And God's being judged right now for participation in the satanic rebellion in God's infinite realm as victims, like Adam, or as perpetrators, like the devil and those that he deceived. That were part of the rebellion. So we're cruising around in our world right now, being persecuted by those around us, spitefully used and killed, because that's what's happened already in God's infinite realm. Some of us are here to be victims, and it seems to be unrelenting, doesn't it? Because that's what happened in God's infinite realm. For us, we suffer like Christ. Because we are rewarded in the same way with glory on the other side. If you are worthy of the reward, you have to be willing, like Christ, to go to, the cross, to carry your cross. You have to be willing to do that. To do whatever it takes. And to stand firm. And be sacrificed. The lamb sacrificed, boom. That's what we do. Or you're a perpetrator. And you are here victimizing those in your environment. They're all around us. Many pretending to be servants of the light when they're not. Having maturity in Christ, having Christ consciousness within us helps us to be immune to the looting influence. It helps us to see more clearly through these veils and to identify the devil, the sons of the devil, and what they're doing. So in, in the statements, some of the statements that I'm making in my reports about Trump and about Elon Musk and about others is by the Spirit by able to look through the veils and to see what's real. And many of those in my environment, they're getting real angry with me because they're still under the deluding, the deluding influence, forcing them to believe what is false. So, my job is just, to, if you can ask the question like Gary's doing here, then my job is to answer, provide the answer. As long as you can answer, it's like your kids and sex. I mean, if you're three years old and you come and ask, I'm not going to give you the whole story. But if you're mature, you know, you're 21 years old, you know, spiritually, and you ask me the questions, I'm going to answer them. That's what you deserve. You deserve to have the truth. God allows me license to be able to do that, as long as you can formulate the question. Then uh, Gary ends here. He says, um, I hope that I have asked these questions correctly and clearly, and that they're even answerable. Thanks in advance for your wisdom and knowledge in this. And... Uh, if you are here in Arkansas, I know Nikki and others of you are here, and you have, Gary can help you. He's between where you are and where I am. And this gives Gary an opportunity to help others and then to climb even higher and to see more of what's happening. So I appreciate you guys' support, and I appreciate you subscribing to The Mystery Explained. My apologies again. I haven't been able to get a report out sooner. But the breadcrumb trail is laid down since 2019. In the videos so had a one of the reasons that I made this report is because one of you subscribed to the tutor program this morning and I'm going you know what I really need to to get this done appreciate you guys support very very much and I hope to be able to I can't say that I'm going to 100% for sure I hope to be able to get all the tutor program members together in a chat room and Gary has expressed interest in being a super administrator 
and open the room and give people a place to come in and then I can be there as often as I can with what's happening. The, uh, the thing to realize is the black star is really close and that our time is running out. And it, my goal is to be numbered among the living, to have the insignia of Elijah, those of us who never see death, in my chest plate. That's very, very important to me. So that's why you say, well, why do you have to prep? Because you're going to be raptured, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, a lot of people, millions and billions are about to die. And I'm doing everything to be numbered among the living, to be here during the darkest hour, just before God puts his hand in here and says, okay, and we go through the veil. Everything's bright and shiny and glorious on the other side, but we are going to be in our darkest moment. Troops are going to be running around everywhere. We're going to be sold. We've already been sold out to China. Everybody should realize that's what Biden's been doing. The Biden crime family has sold us out. China's already here. It's just a matter of executing Project Sandman and destroying all the Navy carriers, and then everybody's going to realize that the big, bad America is toothless. And everybody's running away from America as fast as they can already. So it's going to be like the Great Babylon going down in a day. And so prepare physically along with preparing spiritually if you want to have the emblem of Elijah in your ephod on your chest plate to be able to go the places that I'm going because some of the doors in heaven are going to open up to you because of what's in your chest plate and some of them are not. And a brother, an older brother, is going to have to take you by the hand to show you even what's inside and he will not let your hand go because he's responsible for you. He'll bring you back to the door and let you out and you're going to go, oh my goodness, this is what I missed out on because I put the worldly things ahead of the things that are above. So this is like a last gasp to try to get as many of you guys together as possible. So if, uh, if enough of you write to me and say, hey, I'm, I'm a tutor program supporter and I want to be part of the chat room. If enough of you will do that, then I'll say, okay, I need to stop prepping the gardening or whatever, you know, guns, ammo and prepping and security and everything and get you guys together to do that because you are putting things in heaven above what's here on the earth and that's really where my heart is that like I said I need questions because this is the only one there was one earlier that was going to come ahead of you Gary I mentioned it in a previous report in a black star report but after reading through that this morning I realized most of this is not scripture it's about other stuff and so that's why Gary's came to the top of the list here so, um, and there's not a Terrell's, there's usually a Terrell's clarifying statements because going to christianforums.com and other places, and that's my apologies, haven't had time to be able to do that. But newsletter number one is complete. This video link goes right here. And every, all the mystery reports, subscribers, tutor program subscribers, you can go to the Dropbox folder. Just use your Dropbox folder link. You received it in January. And those of you that just subscribed, you have your link. Just uh, use your link and download this newsletter and you can go through, you know, go through everything and then begin your adventure by going back to number one and coming forward. So that there's a ton of work there. There's more than you can do before the Black Star gets here. Let's put it that way. So that's uh, my report. First mystery report. Let's see the ones that I didn't read to you. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above and not the things on this earth, for you have died. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. There's another diagram that shows the earth inside of heaven, inside of God. It's on the back of the back cover of the Mystery Explained. Uh, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, that's Matthew 24, guys, 29 through 31. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. So at the end of the age, whenever Matthew 24 and Revelation is fulfilled, we come back with him, with the bride, by the way. Revelation 19. And then this is uh, Strong's definition. Metanoia. Repent. And what it means. It says to have a change of mind, but what it means is to have a change of something in the mind. A better translation is change of perception. Change the perception about sin, generally. So when you turn your back on sin and, and you turn around, you realize God never turns his back on you at all. You were facing sin and you had your back turned to God. So the repentance part of the process is what gets you turned around. 
then this is uh, the darkness that fell. The, the earth was formless and void, depending on the translation. Desolate emptiness and darkness was over the face. This is the darkness, the, the dominant feature characteristic of this age. Over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God, that's where the thread begins. Until Revelation, till right here. And the Spirit and the Bride say, come. That Spirit and that Spirit, there's a thread that connects them to all, everything about the Holy Spirit in the Bible. They say, come. And let the ones who hear say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. See, that's the water witness part. The bride water witness and the thirst. God does that in his, throughout his word. He embeds water. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 about Moses starting at verse 1 through 5. You'll see water witness symbolism everywhere. Because Moses, like Noah, like Bathsheba, they are all skins for your mother Eve. I know, sounds crazy, right? Once you understand the types, God will show it to you. And uh, let the one who desires take water of life without cost. See all the water witness stuff in here? Because that spirit is the Holy Spirit, the water witness, testifying for the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what's going on. So with that, the uh, newsletter number one for 2000. Try to put a little extra oomph in there for this particular uh, report. It is more for the mature, but as you go through the Mystery Explained, you'll you'll build strong bones and teeth and you stop skinning your knees so much and you'll stand and walk and then you'll learn to run really really truly a great thing so again subscribe right down here and as soon as you subscribe and i can get your notification email sent to you then just start off for 25 dollars a, a year and go through it if you decide you want to join the tutor program to send me your questions and stuff just click over here 25 25 equals this when you do, you're going to get a copy of this. And this right here, what's in this book, I showed you just a few of the 80 diagrams, is worth its weight in gold. Heavenly gold. Once you can, God anoints you and you can see. And remember, you don't have to use PayPal. I encourage you not to use PayPal. Use Zelle. Use Cash App. And you can get the same thing. It's just whenever you use them, Make sure you write to me right here if you're not already a supporter. If you're a supporter, you want to use Zelle, Cash App, please do. I, heart, I hope you will. You can see all what the prices are for everything and then just send that amount. And then write to me right here and tell me what you want. Say, I want a tutor program and I want this and I want this. And if you if you need your EMP stuff, click on this. Your, your silver, go to Dan. You have Dan's cell number right here. He gave it to me to give to you. And he says, call me seven days a week to help you get your small denomination silver for barter. That helps us to stay out of the way and fly under the radar until the Lord God comes and gets us. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at terrell03.com and I'll see you on the next Mr. Report.